In this video, we're going to be going through an installation of TALib on a Linux system from scratch so that you can easily and quickly get up and running with calculating your technical indicators as is a requirement for lots of other libraries like VectorBT and it also plugs into libraries like Backtrader. Now you may have tried to install TALib just using pip so this is the PyPy package here. So if you do pip install tlib, what will happen is pip will try and pull the package from PyPy here. So if I go over here, it will try and pull this package and attempt to install it. But you'll more than likely get this error here. It'll be some really confusing build error. It'll say fail building wheel etc etc this error originates from subprocess and is unlikely to be a process with pip you'll basically get some error like that and the reason for that is we need to install a dependency of the ta library so there's essentially two versions of the ta library that you need to install there's the original ta lib and what this is is a technical indicator library that's extremely efficient and coded in I think C and assembly code to be as fast as humanly possible and then on top of this you install the Python compatibility layer which is the TA lib package for Python so there's this underlying library that actually does all the calculations and then there's the pip library and that allows Python to communicate with this low-level library. So there are basically just two installs that you need. It can be kind of confusing because every other package you use in Python, you just install from pip and it works fine. But TALib works slightly differently. So how do we install this library? Well, fairly straightforward. You want to go to the downloads page here. So if you just Google TALib or you go to ta-lib.org, You'll find this web page, go to downloads here, and the one we'll be wanting for a Linux system here is the one down at the bottom. So we're going to download the source code and compile it ourselves so we can be sure it's compatible with whatever distribution we're using. So you can just click here and this will give you a SourceForge download. Alternatively, you can also just right click, copy a link address. You can go to a terminal here, and I'm just going to use wget. And that will also just download the tar file here. Once that's done, you should have a tar.gz file in your folder here. We'll now want to unzip this. You can do that with the tar command. So if you do tar-xvf, and then talib, whatever the name happens to be, it'll probably be version 0.4. So once you do that and you do an ls, you'll discover there's a talib folder in here. If for some reason that tar command didn't work for you, you can just go into the folder here, open it up and extract it like you would a WinRAR archive on a Windows system. Continuing on here, if I close this out, you can CD inside that folder with CD talib. And there's all this really confusing stuff here. We don't really need to mess with that too much. Basically, what we need to do is we need to call this configure script here. And that's going to set everything up so that it can build on our system. So if you do dot slash configure prefix is equal to user. This prefix option here is just telling TALib where to install the library. This path should work perfectly well, at least on Debian based systems. If you're in some crazy distribution, maybe this will be different for you. But for most people, this line should work here. So dot slash configure prefix equals user. So that will pull up a load of crazy stuff here. It's just basically checking the build environment, seeing what compilers we have installed. And it'll create a make file here, which the compiler will use to actually build things. At this point, we can call make, which you should have installed on your system. It, sh it should hopefully be a default program. So if you just call make with no arguments, 
that'll start the compiling process here. Now, again, this is going to print out a lot of crazy things and the, the screen's going to flash a lot because of all the printing it's doing. Ultimately, all that's really happening here is it's converting the source code into assembled machine code that can actually be executed as a binary. And then ultimately, the Python package that we install is going to link to that binary so that Python can actually communicate with TLIP. So this will probably take maybe one to two minutes, depending on the speed of your CPU. And in general, it should compile without any errors. I haven't had any errors with it before, as it's a relatively well-tested library at this point in time. So, okay, that has gone and built a binary for us. Now what we need to do is go ahead and install it. So again, if you're on a Debian-based system, it should basically be sudo make install. It'll prompt you for your password if you have one. And then basically what will happen is it'll go and put all the files it needs to in different locations. So maybe we can see here, um, if I type where is, which is a command, at least on Ubuntu, and I type where is tlib, you can see it's installed tlib in user, which was the prefix that we used, include tlib. So we can go there and look at it. So user include tlib. You can see we've got all these header files in here, which allow other programs on our computer to interface with tlib more easily. Now that that's done, if I just do pip install tlib, it should now function fine. It will build a wheel here. So a link to those libraries that we downloaded should be able to auto detect those and we'll have a functioning TALib setup here on a Linux system. Again, this can take one to two minutes depending on your CPU speed. And there we go, we can see it's now being built here. So all being well, I should be able to open up a Python terminal here. If I do Python 3, I can do import TALib as TA, and that imports are just fine which means that the library is more than likely working. So at this point, you should be up and running with a fully functional TALib installation, able to interface with libraries like VectorBT or Bactrader, or just for use on its own to calculate technical indicators super, super fast. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.